So I'm Dr. Ariel Foster, founder of yogaanatomyacademy.com. I am the creator, presenter, teacher of Yoga Journal's new course, Fascia Release for Yoga. It's a really, really lovely and deep six-week course on how myofascial release can complement your yoga practice. Um, let me just say a little bit about my, my, myself and then I'll go more in depth into this myofascial release concept. So my background is I started teaching yoga in the year 2001. I have studied Anusara pretty in depth, uh, although I was never certified. I studied Kripalu yoga and I also lived at the Kripalu yoga center for a while as a seva or a volunteer and that's really my home practice. And um, I did my 200 hour teacher training at Kripalu. I've also done a 300 hour teacher training that was very, very influenced by yoga works, although it wasn't a formal yoga works training. And I've done tons of other trainings over the years, including getting my doctorate in physical therapy. So here I am, kind of halfway through my yoga career, I got my physical therapy doctorate and began treating and seeing uh, patients. So now I have about seven years of hands-on work with thousands and thousands of patients and 16 years of teaching yoga classes, yoga workshops, leading yoga retreats. And one of the things that has become extremely vital in my own practice, my own self-healing, has been myofascial release. I, there's a spectrum of flexibility for people. and. Some people fall on the less flexible side, if this is just your baseline nature, and some people fall on the more flexible side. And most of this is genetically based on the actual collagen makeup of your tissues. So what types of collagen are in there, what kind of mix, what kind of ratio are collagen. And you don't just get to you know, wake up and choose how flexible you are gonna be. So my personal story is that I was a little bit more on the flexible side of things. Uh, I was also trained in flexibility in the sense that I was in dance classes as a kid, um, ballet and tap and jazz, nothing ever serious, but just um, it wasn't, I wasn't playing soccer, right? So it was uh, a lot of play and fun and delight, but more flexibility based most likely, you know, in, in retrospect. So um, when I came to yoga, I was really into stretching. I thought, well, this is a natural fit for me. It's an athletic quote unquote activity that I enjoy. The spiritual side of it really helped me drop in and hopefully become a better person. And I realized a few years in, and this is what led me to get my doctorate in physical therapy, is that I couldn't handle all of that stretching. My body didn't, didn't appreciate it and I was starting to experience some injuries. And that's what led me to physical therapy school. And since then, really, myofascial release has been just an extraordinary uh, complement to my life and an uh, awesome way for me to continue enjoying a yoga practice that gives me fun and delight. So um, let me talk a little bit more about myofascial release. I have my list in front of me here. So fascia is the body's connective tissue matrix. It is the scaffolding of the body that, um, that involves your collagen fibers, involves the wrapping around the tissues, the muscles, the individual muscle cells. It involves, um, even depending on the definition you use, the actual collagen fibers of your um, arterial walls and also all the fluff in between. So in the dissection lab and as a, in my doctoral program for physical therapy, I had to spend seven weeks dissecting five days a week for four hours a day in the dissection lab in addition to anatomy lectures. And what happens is when you peel back the layers, you're just sweeping away all the fluff in between one layer of muscle and the next, or the skin and the muscle tissue. And only the things that can be distinctly named are what we pay attention to in the dissection lab, historically speaking, at least from a medical perspective. So um, fascia is also a word that can be, in its biggest, broadest sense, inclusive of the stuff between the stuff, that sort of spider webby stuff that kind of binds and holds us all together. So fascial release isn't necessarily targeting fascia, 
on its own. But it is um, it's a nice term to describe the this recognition that there's a lot more than just muscle and bone than just bricks and mortar to the body that the fascial network is a huge home a hub of sensory receptors so the information that gets sent to our brain about pain about um, fluidity about where we are in space how we're moving etc etc so there is so much good stuff to be um, extracted from this new realm of fascia release information um okay so i think that's the basics of myofascial release my favorite kind of myofascial release uh, is when somebody gives it to you right so if you went to see a, a skillful physical therapist or a body worker, rolfer, a massage therapist, they can go into your tissues with their hands and kind of work some things around. And that can be really extraordinary and targeted. I don't know about you, but I couldn't do that every single day of my life. I just don't have the time. And um, not to mention there's a, there's a cost to it. So what I can do every day is a little bit of rolling. And that just uses my body weight for the most part and uh, my body weight kind of pressing down on some kind of ball or a foam roller. His more stubby little 12 inch foam roller that I love. Um, even the corner of a yoga block you can use and you can even use squishy balls. It doesn't have to be something hard. It doesn't have to be like a, a mean lacrosse ball that you stick into your ribs or something like that. In fact, I don't do that. Um, so. I wanted to give a tip on wrist pain today because so many people come to yoga with wrist pain. And I'm gonna start by saying something a little bit abstract. So wrist pain can come from the actual wrist itself, the, the mechanical structure, the bones and the fascia and the muscles right here around the wrist or the forearm. But it can also come, and I think this is way more frequent than even physical therapists really recognize, from neck and shoulder and the neural network that really stems down from our brain all the way down. So I'm gonna give you a tip for your forearms. I'm gonna give you a tip for your triceps. We tend to use triceps a lot in vinyasa yoga. And I'm gonna give you a tip for your infraspinatus, this muscle at the kind of back of the shoulder, okay? So forearms, grab a ball. It can be a lacrosse ball, a golf ball, a squishy ball. It can be one of these duo kind of balls. This one's made by Rad Roller. I'll try to put a link in the notes to Rad Roller in the comments, and I'll try to put a link in there to, um, to this short foam roller that I really love because for some people, some of my patients even travel with a short foam roller. It fits in a carry-on. So grab a block, and I'm gonna show you with two blocks so you can really, really see this. And place this duo on top. And you can take whatever wrist arm is bothering you and take the forearm and just start to glide. If you take your pinky finger side down, you can roll slowly along. This is the, the bone here on the outside of the forearm is your ulna. On the pinky side, I should say, of the forearm is your ulna and I'm literally just the groove, the ulna is fitting into this groove between the two balls. Now this is not a very meaty area, but I'm kind of pulling the meat, so to speak, off the bone. I'm vegetarian, but for those of you who eat meat, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So then I'm gonna take the back of my forearm and flip it up and take my other hand, lean a little into it, and just start to slide the forearm quite slowly as you can see back and forth and I'm actually getting some good spots I use my hands a lot because I teach yoga I spend a lot of time in like plank and side plank but I also use my hands for my physical therapy practice to really palpate and feel where someone is tight or tender and so you're gonna go back and forth nice and slow maybe even slower than me now, if you want more pressure here, you certainly can do more pressure. I just wouldn't chase actual pain. So more pressure can come from being in a kneeling position and being able to lean 
back and forth. And we're going to switch to the softer side of the forearm. And actually, I don't have a whole lot of space here. I just want to show you that I'm getting the apex of the ball right under the soft side of the forearm. And I really don't need to do much because if I go too far, I'm going to literally just flip off the screen or flip off my block. I can hold and oscillate, kind of rock a little side to side. I can use my hand and just extend the wrist and flex the wrist back and forth. And it feels so, so good. So if I had to prescribe this for somebody with wrist pain, I would say set a timer because people love quantification, but with myofascial release, you just really have to go by sensation. So a way to kind of merge those two worlds to quantify, but also go on sensation is just to set a timer for like 90 seconds and or two minutes or one minute or whatever you got. So you got one minute on one side, one minute on the other, and that's a really good, good place to start. So this tip is so helpful for those who feel tight after maybe in the wrist, after a handstand practice or an arm balance practice. Uh, it can be super duper helpful, even after just a, a lot of vinyasas. So the second one I wanna offer to yogis out there is the triceps. And you can do this, by the way, with just one tennis ball. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be one of these fancy devices. However, they tend to be pretty available now. I've seen them sold in sporting goods stores. I've seen them sold in REI. I've seen certainly Amazon is like a great place to buy all kinds of fun things. And you'll just, again, roll back and forth or even better, just bend and straighten the elbow. So this is a pinning technique where I'm pinning my body weight down, the triceps down, in the groove between these two balls, but it could be even the apex of one ball. And I'm sliding and gliding the tissues underneath of it. Not too, not too shabby, yeah? So, this, and you can really go pretty close to the armpit and pretty darn close to the wrist. Again, I would spend about, maybe about a minute or two there, maybe one minute on each side. For those who do a lot of chaturangas, I teach a workshop called Chaturanga Clinic a couple times a year, and every time after I teach that workshop, I go home and I do some myofascial release to my own triceps, because if I demo anything, it's usually like a long hold, and then somebody asks me to show that again from a different angle so that they can see, and they're like, end of the day, my triceps are just pooped. So that is a great practice for those of you who do a lot of chaturangas. And the last thing I was going to say in terms of tips is that really we have to recognize for wrist health and forearm health and elbow health that a lot of stuff starts in the neck. And I don't have a, the best angle right now with this camera to show you uh, neck stuff, but in short, you can lie on your back with a couple of tennis balls back in here. Um, however, I think I can give you a good visual for a kind of intermediary spot where a lot of our nerves pass through to get to the arms. This would be the posterior rotator cuff. Now, you'll just have to imagine this is one ball. So you're gonna stick it right on the back of your shoulder blade. If you are getting to your right side, this is my right side, um, you'll take your left arm and just hook it over your shoulder. You'll feel kind of a horizontal ridge. This is the, the spine of the scapula and you want the ball to be right underneath that. It's not the meatiest place, but it's just enough. So you're gonna take the apex of the ball, right there, I'm gonna do my best to show you with this funky, funky angle here, and then lay down on it. Yep, can't see much. I literally just fell into a weird shadow, <laughs> but that's it. So, and then once you're down, you can do little wiggles, keep the ball on your shoulder blade, Maybe tick tock your arm, which is 
like this. I don't know if you can see it, but my elbows out to the side, close to 90 degrees, and then I'm very slowly back and forth. This is that pin and mobilize technique that I mentioned earlier. So you've got forearm, triceps, infraspinatus slash posterior rotator cuff, and just a quickie, some ideas on going up to your neck. Now with all this stuff, you wanna avoid any intense, intense pain, anything that's gonna make you grip, even on a subtle level. So start soft, start with uh, even a squishy ball. I don't have a super small squishy ball with me right now, but this is like a nice big squishy ball that you can use all over your back or your core, around your pelvis, anything that's like really tender. Um, anywhere you've had an old surgery, you want to be really sweet. You want to start off very light and work your way deeper. And I have to say, I have jam-packed this course with Yoga Journal that is um, starting, the modules that is, are going to be released starting February 19th, 2018. But once you're in, you have access for life and if you purchase beyond that date you'll very likely get all of the videos all at once I can't say for sure since I'm not like the behind the scenes web person but I think what happens is you sign up and you get access to everything all at once so this six-week course has techniques for literally your feet your calves your shins your thighs your hamstrings your butt <laughs> your hip flexors your tensor fascia lata, your core, your back, everything, all the way up. And not only that, but I'm coupling it with um, yoga poses that are a really good uh, balance, like kind of a way to see and almost quantify and measure difference from before the myofascial release to afterwards. So if you have any questions whatsoever, this is actually a pretty decent time to type them in. I don't know how many people are live. I'm not like the most skillful at this Facebook Live thing, but I do know that um, the link to the course is in the description to this Facebook Live. I'm also, like I said, gonna put the link to the Rad Roller if you want some kind of little peanut device like that that's like two balls conjoined. They're super handy. I travel with them everywhere. Like I, I, I won't go away for a weekend or on a train to New York without taking these some kind of tennis ball or rad roller duo with me. And yeah, so this course with Yoga Journal, six weeks jam-packed. If you are a yoga teacher, you get 20 to zero um, CEUs. It's the, obviously the not in-person CEUs, but the CEUs for um, distance learning or whatever they call it these days. And if you're a yoga teacher, you'll also learn enough techniques in this six week course that you can incorporate them into your yoga classes and especially into your work with private clients. It will make such a huge difference. If you've ever been in one of those situations where you're working with a private client and they're like, yeah, that pose just doesn't really work for me or I just feel stuck. You can use some of these myofascial release techniques with them, self myofascial release so you're not breaking any law and like practicing massage without a license or anything like that and just guide them through it and then see what happens and I would love to hear how it goes. So please, I'll be available to answer questions later in the day. If you wanna park them below, I'll get to them eventually. Much love, I hope everyone out there is experiencing fascial freedom and optimal body and heart well-being. and I can't wait to connect more. Thanks for watching.